Well, in my previous video, the She-Hulk was overheating and I kind of found out why it was overheating just while I was in the BIOS. And basically you're gonna kind of think it's silly, but this is what software does. However, before I get to that, I just wanted to show you some temps over here and let me just zoom in quick. All right, so right now we do have three cores that are at 96, 97, and I've been running this thing for about six minutes right now on a 10 minute loop. Well, a 10 minute run, not a loop. But anyway, yeah, so we have three cores that are, you know, getting a little toasty right there, but before these, all these were really getting bad. And again, when I was in the BIOS, that was the biggest problem. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about that. So basically, yeah, I'm just doing a run on this to see if the temperatures have been under control and it seems like they are now. Now, the first thing what was happening while I was in the BIOS, I was in the 80s as far as the temperature goes. So that's Celsius, about 85 to 88 Celsius. Sometimes it dropped down on the upper 70s. That's way too hot for being in the BIOS. I thought the pump had failed. But a deeper look into it, I get into the software for the IQ software. And every time I clicked on the cooling to look at my fan curve, it would last maybe 10 to 20 seconds and the whole thing would disappear. So that part of the software would just disappear. There was no option for it again. And then within a minute later, maybe less 30 seconds, it would populate again. I click on it and it would just keep repeating. It would disappear and I click on it, it would disappear. So, there was an update for the IQ software, which I went ahead and did. And then I went into Armory Create and updated the BIOS, or excuse me, updated all the firmware for the motherboard, for the actual pump, which is more, I don't know if it's firmware just for the LEDs or also for the pump, but nevertheless, we did all those updates. I, I did all the updates for everything in this. So that was all taken care of. I went back into the BIOS and then I was able to see that the temperatures had dropped. So it had something to do with some kind of a conflict where I believe the fans were not running properly. Now, right now we have about five, cores that are hitting 96. Oh, I did have one that hit 99 degrees. That's core seven. That's still a little hot. And I'm going to show you on the BIOS before these were hitting these temperatures within two minutes of running Cinebench. So what I want to do is get back in here and I want to show you how to adjust the P1 and P2 levels. I've already adjusted them lower, but it looks like I have to go just a little bit lower just to get these temperatures a little bit better under control. Now, I really don't have to because I don't push this thing this hard, but I do want to show you in case you're having this problem. This is just stock settings also, but this is also at 12900 KS. So anyway, stick right there. I'm going to show you how to do this. All right, so don't worry about the scoring. I don't really care about the scoring. Scoring is gonna get less and less as we drop the PL, P, PL1 and PL2, this power level one, power level two. That's not of concern of mine. What is concerning is these temperatures rising like this. And it's, it's generally normal when you keep running this, but we're gonna let this go for another uh, 15 seconds. And I haven't hit 100 degrees C yet on any of them, but like I said, uh, Core 7, P Core 7 is running at 99. So we're gonna look to see if we can drop these a little bit. And as soon as this is done with its last run, we'll see the final score. Not that we care, but let's just let this thing finish. Okay, there's our score if you care. It is less than what I was getting before because I am adjusting the power levels. So we can see that they drop right down to a pretty good amount. They drop anywhere between like 37 to um, 45. We're gonna go ahead and restart the computer and get into the BIOS. All right, so what we're gonna do is go over to the Extreme Tweaker. We're going to see, I'm on Intel default settings and we got disabled for the multi-core enhancement. It's disabled, it's enforced all limits. But anyway, we're gonna come down here to internal CPU power management. And then we can see that this used to be 241 watts for the PL1 and the PL2 
is at 200 watts and this used to be 241 also. So what I'm gonna do is drop this one down to two, or excuse me, to 195. And then we're gonna drop this one down to 200. And then we're gonna push F10 and exit. I don't use this for gaming or anything. I don't use it for anything crazy. So I'm comfortable with less power being delivered. And we're just rebooting now and it's gonna take effect. And we're gonna go right back into Windows. We're gonna run Cinebench again and look at those temps and see if we can uh, get those a little lower. Okay, so we're starting right out here. We have a max of like 47 for the core temperature and the package 55. We can hit the reset. Sometimes that drops it, sometimes it doesn't. Actually, it just went up just by doing that down here for the for the package, it's at 60C. All right, so anyway, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and start this one on a 10 minute again, the multi-core. And our initial jump was all the way up to 92. So that did not help it at all to do that, which I thought it would have. But let's give it a chance and I will see what it does in about 10 minutes. So I didn't like those readings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower those PL1, PL2 yet again. And because I let it run for about four or five minutes, but I still had one core that was hitting 97 degrees C. And you know, to some people that's probably not a problem. And it really isn't for me, but I just wanted to show you that this can be done. And we're gonna drop this to 190. And then we're gonna also drop this to maybe 185. Okay, so let's do F10 and save. So something I wanna point out here is we can see the PL1 and PL2 at 190 and 185. Just in case you're wondering where it is in here, you can actually see it. So we are set to that. And here's our core temperatures. Let's do a reset. So right now we're in the upper 30s, low 40s. Let's start this and see where we go. See if we get crazy again real fast. Right now we are at 84 for the package temp. Well, right now we are about halfway in at uh, another 20 seconds we'll be halfway in, but we have only gone up to about 92 C. So it is thermal throttling, but it is so much better just like this. But again, we're halfway through. We're gonna let it go the whole way and see if we have any of these cores that are gonna hit like 96 or above, which I don't think so. Our hottest one has been 92. We got nine, uh, let's see, 92 on P-Core 5, it looks like. Yep, P-Core 5, and then we have 91 on P-Core 7. So those are hotter, hottest cores out of all of them. Oh, we do have uh, P-Core 2 is 92. So, yep, looking pretty good. All right, this thing is done now. It's just gonna finish its last lap around, but our highest we got was 93, and that being P-Core 7 and P-Core 2. So those are our two highest. If we, I thought it would show the, oh yeah, we do have E cores down here. So uh, yeah, our E cores didn't even make it that high. So it's all of our P cores. All right, so that's our score. Obviously we did drop in the scoring a little bit just due to lowering our power limits, but that's okay. I'm not in it for that. And if you want your computer, especially if you have a 12900 KS like myself, this is what you gotta do, or you have to undervolt it. Those are the only couple options that you do have. Okay, well, given those numbers and how we went about doing that, there are a few things that I wanna take care of in here. So these fans are actually drawing air down from the top. And what I wanna do is turn those around so they're either blowing out or blowing cold air from in here. The other thing we could do is actually move the AIO to the front and, and pull 
cool air in from the front. So we have a couple of scenarios we can do. I kind of want to uh, play around with that a little bit and see if we can get the temperatures just a little bit cooler. I don't want to get fixated on the temperature. It's actually working perfectly fine. This PC really does need to come apart and be cleaned, but that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to show you how to lower those power limits and I'll probably make a future video on moving those around and see if we can get the temperatures a little bit lower. It's just for a video. It's nothing that I would even do personally if it's working like this, it's working perfectly fine. So anyway, any way, Give this thing a subscribe and go ahead and share this. Comment down below if you wish. Give this thing a thumbs up. I wish you could do two, but you can't. You can only do one. And stay tuned for the next video, guys. Till next time. Take care.